Interventions with a King. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack, Cardiovascular Interventions. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Skip Anderson, Associate Editor of Jack Interventions, and I'm here today interviewing Dr. Jeffrey Geske from the Mayo Clinic about his upcoming paper, Variability of Left Ventricular Outflow Tract Gradients During Cardiac Catheterization in Patients with Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy. So um, welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. Please tell us um, how many patients did you have and how did you do these recordings in the cath lab? Sure. We took 50 uh, patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, brought them to the cardiac catheterization lab, and each patient underwent a high fidelity cardiac catheterization, including transeptal puncture, to try and obtain an accurate measure of the left ventricular outflow tract gradient. I see. So high, f high fidelity means you use the micromanometer That's tip catheters transeptal positioning. That's correct. All patients had the high fidelity micromanometer tip catheters during the time of their catheterization. I see. And the patients were identified through the use of uh, echocardiography prior to catheterization? Correct. Each patient did undergo echocardiography and this was a predominantly symptomatic population that was referred f either for uh, septal reduction therapy or for pharmacologic in interventions and study. I see. And the variability that you observed, how wide was this variability and over how much of a time interval of recording did it occur? Uh, it, was, it was impressive. We looked at patients during a resting state and over a period of less than eight minutes we observed variability, a mean variability of nearly 50 millimeters of mercury. Wow, 50 millimeters of mercury over approximately eight minutes. How, how long were the recordings made though typically? Yeah, the, it varied a little bit patient to patient, but uh, on average, uh, I would say a sampling of perhaps 20 to 30 minutes was studied within the uh, peak variability noted over a period of approximately eight minutes. Eight minutes, I see. And um, I think you noticed a correlation between the PVC-induced gradients and the amount of this variability. Can you comment on that? Yeah, we looked at a number of different uh, clinical factors septal thickness, we looked at ejection fraction, history of syncope, ICD implantation, a number of different things. And really the only thing that correlated with the degree of variability of the alpha tract gradient was the post-PVC gradient. I see, post-PVC gradients. And did the variability that you uh, were able to observe, did this have um, any problems with uh, misclassification of these patients? It's a, it's a good point. We saw that 56% uh, of patients at the time of their largest left ventricular outflow tract gradient could be ca classified as having obstruction. However, if you took the smallest measurement during that resting time, a full 50% of the study population could actually be classified otherwise. So only 6% only of the patients that were obstructive were always obstructive, and actually 50% of the total study population had potential to be misclassified as either obstructive or non-obstructive. Non-obstructive, I see. So how can uh, regular cardiologists, invasive cardiologists, use this information uh, in their daily work? Uh, should we do longer recordings the regular fashion? What, what, what should we do? I think that it's really important to be aware of the degree of variability, and not only that, the, the temporal relationship of this, that it happens rather rapidly, and that a single quick measure perhaps is not uh, ideal for uh, correctly classifying or uh, describing the gradient, and that instead uh, it's important that in a patient with uh, symptoms going for a comprehensive hemodynamic evaluation to assess not only the resting gradient, but perhaps consider provocative maneuvers, evaluation of a post-PVC gradient, or looking at perhaps a longer period of time to study the gradient. I see. Thank you, Dr. Geske. This is Dr. Skip Anderson, Associate Editor of Jack Interventions interviewing Dr. Jeffrey Geske from the Mayo Clinic. Thank you.